Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Some people are completely ungrateful, like the lady in our first story who also wrote a bad review about our OP at the end. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. No, you are not entitled to a free latte because you locked yourself out of your own house. I work in a little neighborhood cafe for about four years, and there's one entitled customer I'll never forget. Every day she showed up angry, antsy, and perpetually running late for work. If there was a line of people in front of her, she would try to cut in on the side and demand that I make her a latte now. I always let her attitude slide right off until one winter morning. She arrived at the cafe 20 minutes before opening. She was shivering and not dressed appropriately for the snow outside. I felt bad for her and worried about her getting frostbite, so I let her in. She told me she lost her house key and wanted to wait somewhere warm for a friend to pick her up. She looked so cold and anxious that I offered her a free drip coffee. I want a latte, was her reply. I told her I couldn't give her a free latte as it's too expensive, but a free large coffee's okay. She started to cry. She tells me that her wallet is locked in her house too. I told her I'm sorry, but all I can give you is a free drip coffee. She hit the counter and called me a cold bee. How could I be so heartless? You're making my day even worse. I really need a latte for free. I'll pay you back eventually. I said, I'm sorry, but it's the policy of our cafe. We've had too many people ask for free things and never pay us back. I told her she could stay as long as she needed while she sorted out her house key problem. She stomped all around the cafe. I ignored her raging and went to the back room. I needed to prep food and put baked goods into the oven. Suddenly, the staff door opened. The lady marched right into the back area and said she wants me to make her a latte for free. I deserve it. It's been such an awful morning. I told her she wasn't allowed back here and walked her to a table. I said, I will not give you a latte. Stay here if you want, but if you're only here for a free latte, then go somewhere else. She replied that you'll be hearing from me. I'm going to inform your boss of how heartless you are and write a terrible review on Google. Then she walked right out the door and left. Later, my boss pulled me aside and showed me an email she received from Latte Lady. It was over 800 words long. In it, she lied. The summary of her version of events was that I didn't want to let her inside and that when she ordered a coffee, I wouldn't give it to her because she was five cents short. And when she cried because she was upset, I called her a bee. Luckily, my boss knew me well and could see how exaggerated and over the top it was. She called the lady and told her she's no longer a welcome customer. And our second story. I do work here. Do I need to stand behind a counter to prove it to you? Cast. Me, a-hole, and co-worker. Just got home from work, and this man really pissed me off. So it's a busy day for returns at the car rental company I work for. This also means that there are many empty spaces in our parking lot because lots of people are renting cars. So I see two cars pull up to the return area and one of them pulls forward into one of the spaces reserved for luxury cars for rent, facing the rental counter in order to entice customers. It really irks me when people do this since there's a solid line demarcating the end of the return area, but they do this all the time, so I just put up with it. I go do the second car first because he stopped in the return area and I was feeling spiteful. They returned the car normally. I scanned the barcode on the windshield, addressed them by their full name, and then walk around the vehicle. Then I ask for the keys and record the odometer in the fuel level. My machine prints them a receipt and they're on their way. Bear in mind that I'm in full uniform, which has been described to me as resembling a pit crew member with a handheld scanner and a printer. After I finish with them, I go over to the parked car in the wrong place and scan its barcode as I walk around the vehicle. I say, Keith XXXXX, his full name. a -hole says, yeah warily and giving me a suspicious look. I then ask, keys are in the vehicle? A-hole says, no, they're in my pocket. I say, could I grab them from you, please? A-hole says, I don't give my keys to anybody, and storms off into the building to get in line at the counter. So I go behind the counter and install myself at a computer, checking the number of returns for the day in the manifest to prove to him that I'm actually an employee. He still waits in line until my coworker has just finished renting a car. 
He walks up to the counter and my coworker says, hi, how can I help you today? And he mumbles, returning. Coworker says, sure, OP will be able to help you with that. He'll go get you a receipt. I run outside and check the odometer and fuel. I go back inside and shove his receipt at him, not waiting or caring whether he'd been charged the correct amount. I turn on my heels and run back outside. F him. I've never been so disrespected by a customer. And our next story. The time the airline I worked for lost thousands because they didn't want to pay me. So the year before COVID hit the US, I started working for one of the major airlines at my local airport as a baggage handler. I absolutely loved the job. I just enjoyed being around planes from the ground level. When I started, there were no full-time positions available, so I was working part-time, six-hour nights, five times a week. The way it usually works is each gate has a lead, the person with extra training to do the load planning and scanning and towing the planes to the runway as well as guiding them in, and a few baggage handlers. Now, I'd only been there a few months, but I was working my butt off and showing that I was a team player. I decided I was going to try and become a lead even though they usually want you to work a year or so as a handler first. I was confident and ended up passing the training course with ease. The problem was they had no availability for more leads, so I was put into what was basically an on-call lead kind of thing where they could upgrade me for the day if they needed more leads. Now, whenever they upgrade you to lead, even if it's for a single flight, they have to pay you the extra $1.75 an hour leads get for your whole shift. Remember, I work six hour days, so ten fifty is the cost to make me a lead for my shift. Now, for a few months, everything was great. I was a part-time baggage handler, but was working as a lead for my whole shift every shift and was loving every second of it. Something about towing huge planes full of people to the runway was just awesome to me. Enter everyone's favorite virus, good old COVID-19. Within months, the airline industry is tanking pretty hard as nobody wants to travel and get stuck somewhere. Supervisors are being told to cut costs everywhere they can, which makes sense given the circumstances. Cue up the night of my malicious compliance. It's maybe 11 p.m. and I'm on till 1 a.m. Supervisors have sent a large chunk of workers home and those of us left are being sent all over the airport to cover the flights we do still have coming. I get a call from the office that assigns your flights and I'm told to go grab a box and a walkie, the stuff needed to plug into the plane to talk to the flight deck. They tell me, head to the gate, the flight's landing in five, and to just put in my request for lead, when asked to be lead, you put it in the company app and a supervisor approves your pay raise for the day. I get to my gate, check the load coming off the plane, brief the handlers on what's coming down, and we all get to our spots to bring the plane in. I see the plane coming down the lane to my gate, and at the same time, my zone supervisor drives up to my gate and asks me to come over. He then tells me something along the lines of, Hey man, we can't upgrade you to lead right now, we just can't swing that extra expense right now. I respond with, okay, so who's going to bring this plane in? Nobody else on the gate is lead trained and supervisors are not allowed to do any of our work because of the union rules. He then tells me he's going to find another lead to bring it in and to just assist him when he arrives. So I'm like, sure, whatever. Now, it's important to note that planes have very tight metrics for how long it can take to bring a flight in, unload, and reload for the next flight. The flight pulls up to the edge of my gate and comes to a stop as there's no lead there guiding them in, so the flight just sits there, waiting. And the entire gate crew are also just standing around waiting. 20 minutes go by and my radio, I still have on me, goes off and the office is pissed. They want to know why the hell I'm holding this flight short and not bringing it in. To which, obviously, I reply with, what do you mean? Ex-supervisor told me they couldn't afford to pay me for lead work today and that he'd find someone else. He then asked me if I can please just bring it in for him and I said, sorry, but if you're not willing to pay me to do the lead work, then I'm only going to do the handler work I'm being paid for. As it turns out, they sent too many leads home this night and the ones they did have were all busy on flights already. After about 45 minutes, a lead from two terminals over finally strolls up and we're able to unload the plane as usual but that 45 minutes the plane sat idle at the gate cost thousands in extra fuel, plus overtime for flight attendants forced into mandatory overtime from the situation, not to mention all the passengers who were PO'd from the extra weight who all were comp some credits with the airline for the trouble. I also come to find out the supervisor's bonus were based on flight turn time, and this 45-minute short hold cost him his bonus and a write-up. 
Once they know they can make you do the work with the responsibility but not the extra pay, it'll become the norm. Know your worth. Good job, OP. And our last story. Handicapped parking is for handicapped people, not rich ones. First, just for your information, in most handicapped parking spots, there's a place next to the parking spot marked off for loading and unloading wheelchairs. In the U.S., it's usually painted with diagonal stripes. On to the story. My son and I were at Walmart, and as I parked, I saw that a new BMW convertible owner decided that the striped spot was set aside for him. I was PO'd, and I stewed about it the whole time we were shopping. When he was still parked there when I came out, I decided to get spiteful. I found a piece of paper and left a note on his windshield that said, So sorry, I did not mean to scrape your car with my wheelchair. I would leave my contact info, but you were illegally parked blocking my van, so good luck buffing that out. We sat in the car for another 20 minutes and waited. Out came this guy that looked like a personal trainer. He came jogging up to his car, chatting on his phone. He saw the note and screamed, Oh, crap! Then he spent the next 20 minutes going over his car inch by inch, rubbing every speck of dust or dirt. He was still looking when we left. Nothing harmed, no damage, just a lesson hopefully learned. Hey guys, thank you for watching the video. Hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.